Howdy guys, IndiePixel here. And I really appreciate everyone's uh, support so far. Uh, thanks for all the comments and stuff like that. Really, it's fun to talk to the community and stuff like that. Um, I am back to all my YouTube stuff. I know I took quite a little break there for the beginning of this year, but I am back and got all the client work stuff out of the way and GDC. So what are we gonna do in this particular video? So we're gonna go over um, two things really. Uh, we're gonna go over how to do grouping with VEX over here. All right, so we're gonna learn how to utilize the um, set prim group and point group. So we're gonna do that and then we're going to um, take a look at how to get the sizes of objects and then use that information to create masks that then you can actually go and group things with, right? So I do this a lot when I'm uh, modeling. I need ways to generate masks, you know, based off of things like proximity or height, you know, size. Um, so it comes in handy. So I just wanted to go over the, the core concept of how these things work. So let's jump out of here and I'm going to drop down a new geometry node so we can uh, do this together here. All right, so I'm going to jump inside here and just hide the other objects. All right, so I do have my geometry spreadsheet open. Um, it'll be really useful for you to have that open. So um, let's just cover that. So I'm going to go and split the pane top and bottom and then just select geometry spreadsheet. All right, uh, I'm going to get rid of this file node here. And uh, the first thing I want to do is just drop down a grid. All right, so we have some geometry to work with. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover the, um, the grouping methods that are available to us inside of VEX. So let's drop down an attribute wrangle node here. All right. And we're going to start with point grouping because once you understand this, uh, the rest are pretty much the same, but we're going to take a look at points and prims in this particular lesson. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is just understand how the actual code works. Okay, so currently we're set to run over points, so we're going to run whatever code is in here for every single point. And what I want to do is I want to start typing out the method. Now, the method is set point group when you're working with points. Okay, so let's take a look at the help information and let's see what we get just so we can get used to using the help as well. All right, so set point group. Uh, what we want to do is we want to provide it some geometry. All right, so it's either using the input zero. So you use zero for that, or you just say geo self. All right, and then we give it a, a name for the group. Now, if the group doesn't actually exist already, it'll just create it for you. Uh, the point number that we want to put into that group and an integer value. Now this, this value really is just a zero or one. It says, if it's one, then I am in the group. If it's zero, then I'm not in the group. And then finally, a uh, string for the mode. And the two modes are uh, set and toggle. So we're gonna cover all that stuff here. So let's, let's get going. And let's say I wanna group um, point, let me actually comment this out here so I can see. All right, so my point numbers turn on and I'm just going to group let's say 0.5. So if you want to explicitly set a group, you would say zero for the, the input that you want to pull the geometry from, right? Or you do geo self, right? Um, obviously I, I just like typing the input number because it's a lot less to type. Um, and then we want to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this the P group for point group. And then we want to give it a point number. So in this case, I'm setting it explicitly. So I'm going to say 0.5. And um, I want to say you are in the group. And then we set it so that it sets that value. And you can see that 0.5 is now inside of that group. So we have this point group. And it is picked up 0.5. And if we were to go and actually visualize that, we can visualize that with our, our uh, display group and attribute list utility then we set it to uh, points and you can see that we have point five in that group and you can also change the color over here let me double click this guy there we go so you can see it let me switch over to wireframe there so we got point five in the group perfect all right so you know from here 
um, it's it's pretty simple. So let's do something and say if um, the at pt num is less than 10. So let's group all of those guys. So we're going to say set point group from the geo self. We're going to put it in the p group. And we're going to give it the at pt num because we need to get the current number that we're on. And we're going to say 1 because we want to put all points that are that have the ID less than 10 into this group. And so I'm going to say uh, one for that and then set. There we go. And now we have all those points, zero through nine. Pretty cool. So let's say I want to remove something from that particular uh, point group, but I don't want to get rid of the group or anything like that. So let's say I want to remove point seven from this. So what we can do is say set point group Again, a geo self. And we'll say from P group. And we'll say at, uh, and I actually want to set it explicitly, so there, 0.7. Uh, we can always set it to zero, and that will work as well. So now we don't have 0.7 in there. Uh, we can also toggle it, so you can put toggle in there, and then I'll turn it off. So if I were to have another one here that was set to toggle, it basically just flips it, and now it's back in. All right, and that's that's the basics of how the, the grouping works inside of uh, VEX. It's basically the same for primitives. Uh, you'll notice that. Let's go drop down another uh, wrangle node here, and we'll work with primitives. So you'll notice if I start setting, typing out set, and we do prim group, it's got the same setup, and the code is pretty much exactly the same. Actually, I think it's exactly the same. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. So it works exactly the same. So you have, you know, for vertices, any type of group that you can create in Houdini, you can create that here. So you have set vertex group and uh, set detail group, I believe. Uh, anyways, so let's go and do something like, um, we'll call this the prim group. Like so, and I want to do, let's get rid of our point numbers now, and we'll do uh, primitive numbers. Let's say I want to do um, primitive 5 inside of there. So we'll say 0.5, we want to add it to the group, and then say set. All right, so then we want to switch our view over here in the geometry spreadsheet over to primitive, and we have primitive 5 in the group. And if we were to check that in our display, we have primitive five inside of the group as well. And the, the same goes, you can always toggle it like so. Boom. Pretty simple stuff. All right. So that's, that's the basics of uh, grouping right there. Um, so let's move on to the BB box stuff which is really fun as well. So what I'm going to do is drop down a box. And for this, I'm going to actually set it to a polygon mesh. And I'm going to change these um, the resolution of it. So let's display it. And let's go. And I'm going to hide the display groups and attributes there. And I'm going to just increase the resolution of this guy. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to start gener generating masks based off of the size of this particular box. I want to get all the information about this and start to process it uh, so I can generate uh, color masks that I can then use for grouping or attributes or whatever, right? So let's drop down another angle node, like so. And the first thing we're going to do, let's uh, do something simple i mean it's all this is all pretty you know basic stuff it's all the core concepts but let's do something like the min size so what i'm going to do is say vector min is equal to get bb box min and for this particular uh function we only need to provide it the geometry that we want to work on so let's take a look at it in the help so there's the geometry and then there's actually an override that allows us to then throw in a primitive group so it'll only work on certain primitives. So in this case, I'm just going to use the, the first override there. Okay. 
So let's give it uh, the zero input, the first input here. And put the semicolon there. All right, so now inside of this vector, we have the minimum information. This is literally exactly like if I were to um, do something like the BB box, right? So the BB box function, where you go and get the D Y max or Y min. It's all, it's exactly like that. So uh, what I want to do is get rid of that transform. We don't need that anymore. So let's do something like, uh, we're going to say the color at CDR is equal to at P dot uh, Y divided by the min dot Y. Let's see what we get. And we actually get this gradient. Uh, let's initialize the color to something, to nothing. There we go. So now we get this gradient based off of the minimum uh, height of this particular object. All right, so what we can do is we can flip that, right? If we get the max now, so we'll say vector max is equal to get BB box max. Give it that geometry. And let's say now we do max y. Boom. So we flip it. You could always um, also get the inverse when you do something like one minus these guys. There you go. I actually extended it, but cool. So then uh, let me get rid of that. Well, actually, we can leave it there. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so let's do uh, something else here. Um, let me actually switch that over to the green channel as well. So it kind of represents everything. Now I changed my mind. I want to keep the original one that I have. There we go. Cool. Now let's do the um, the max on the x, right? So if we say r is equal to at p dot x divided by, let's say, the max x here. There we go. So now we've got a gradient going that way. Now, the cool thing about this is uh, we can create a full gradient uh, by using a fit function in here. So let's say something like, um, let's say fit at p dot x. And we're going to fit that between the min x and the max x. And then I'm just going to normalize it. So 0 to 1, like so. And there you go. So now you have a full gradient. All right, and if you need the, the size information, you can get that as well. So we can say vector two, we'll say size is equal to the get BB box size. And that instead of positional values, you get the overall size of the, the bounding box of this particular object. So, you know, the full Y height or the full X uh, width or the full Z depth. All right, uh, another cool thing is the uh, center. So we can actually do uh, the some cool stuff with this. So I'm going to say get BB box center. All right. And let's do something like at CD dot B is equal to the distance. Let's do a distance of the current point position to that center itself. And uh, right off the bat, you can see it's kind of working. It's really hard to tell. So if I do a one minus here to flip it, like so, it's still relatively difficult to detect. But I'm creating a circle, basically. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see it now. So what we would need to do is actually um, multiply the position by some sort of scalar. So we'll say CHF. And we don't. I don't need those brackets. I don't know why I did that. CHF um, uh, P scalar. And then we need to generate that parameter. So now if I were to increase this, you can see that we're getting a circle in the middle there. All right, and if we were to change where that center is by adding some sort of vector to it, so let's say it's plus uh, 0, 0 0.5, and 0, and Z, I'm just going to move the center up a little bit. We're now starting to you know, get something that you can use some sort of radial selection or something like that. Cool. So that's really what I, I wanted to show there. Uh, you can see that when you start typing in get BB box, there's 
the whole BB box. So it's a bunch of information, all of the information, then the center, the max, min, and size. And that is that. So you can create some really cool masks that way um, really quickly. And let me get rid of the, I want to keep that in the center there. All right. That, well, actually, I had one more thing I wanted to show. So I want to actually multiply these min and maxes by a uh, parameter as well. So we'll say min scalar. And let's just copy this. And paste it. So we'll call this the max scalar. Now you can give yourself some control over that ramp. Right? So now we can you know, provide sliders to change the mask or something like that. I don't know. I just like showing all these, these different little techniques because you basically you know, take all these techniques and you start combining them and uh, creating uh, more complex versions. These are just little components that you put into your entire graph that you know, ends up making you something cool like a bridge or something like that. You know? Anyways, that, my friends, is what I wanted to show. Again, thanks so much for all the uh, support out there. And I'm going to start posting a bunch more videos, working on the airplane physics course, um, working on a procedural prop course, too. Um, obviously, the physics course is taking precedence right now. But anyways, yeah, thanks, guys. I'll talk to you in a bit.